OpenAI has purchased Windsurf. Windsurf is the number two AI development platform behind Cursor. If you're like, why does this matter? I will tell you why it matters. Code and engineering are the number one priority for most model makers right now. So OpenAI purchasing a coding environment underlines again how important it is to them. And they paid a pretty penny. Uh, they paid a 75x multiple on Windsurf reportedly. Uh, so they bought them for $3 billion. And that is even more than the multiple offered to Cursor in their latest round. They raised yet again, they're at a $9 billion valuation. So three times more than Windsurf. Uh, Cursor is the number one AI powered development environment in the space. If you want to get a sense of like how nuts this space is right now, Cursor has increased their ARR, their annual recurring revenue by $200 million in the last four months. Like not even like a half a year and they've added $200 million in ARR. That's how crazy it is right now. And so I of course thought to myself, well, why would a model maker that has been focused on intelligence for people as a whole care to buy Windsurf? And people are like, well, this means that they can have their own development environment, that they can customize exactly the way they want, they can optimize it for their models, maybe partly. I do not think it is likely though, that they are going to cut off model access to other models from Windsurf. If I were them, I would actually keep it because it gives you so much more info. It gives you a sense of who is using what models for what, which coding tasks works work well for which models. And by the way, you don't have to be looking at the details of the code. You can have a very high level, relatively anonymized understanding of token usage, and you can still get a sense of like a footprint of usage that's very useful. The other thing you can do is you can actually start to understand the dynamics of team usage for a tool like that in a way that you don't get if you don't own the tool. And so OpenAI can basically say, hmm, it looks like this is a tool that like L5 engineers are using, but L6s aren't using as much. This particular model is preferred by L7 engineers versus L5 engineers. And when they get into agentic workspaces, which you know they're going for AI agents, you need a deep and tightly integrated development environment to make AI agents work well. And OpenAI has been super upfront about the fact that they, like everybody else in the space, wants an AI coding agent. I mean, join Mark Zuckerberg, he wants that as well. Uh, join Dario Amade, the founder of Anthropic, that's where he's going with Claude. You might ask, why? Why do they care so much? about coding? And the answer is multiple fold. As I've called out on my Substack, if you can make code run, you have a very easy reward indicator for AI that tells you you built a good code, you did a good thing, the AI succeeded. That is something you don't get with other things. The, the exact opposite happens with something like great literature. There's 20 million ways to write great literature and everyone argues about it all the time. And you can't really tell what's good and what's not in the same way. Humans will say this is good and this is not, but humans also disagree with each other. That is not the case for code. The reward clarity is really, really good. Either it runs or it does not run. So that's reason one. It's really easy from a machine learning perspective to optimize there. Reason two is that code is leverage. At the end of the day, if you can get AI building code, AI can build so much other stuff because it can now code. And so just the fact that you can get it to work with that tool set unlocks so many other possibilities. Dario Amade has gone so far as to say, effectively, he views the ability to code as like the key stepping stone along the way toward AGI or artificial general intelligence. So, so like strategically, that makes sense. I hope you are getting a little bit more of a sense of why Sam Altman in particular might care. The rumor is he actually offered or asked the Cursor team first. He wanted the number one player. The price was too spicy. If you're growing by $100 million in incremental ARR every 60 days, I mean, honestly, you can kind of do whatever you want. You can be your own player. You're in the position of Mark Zuckerberg with Facebook in the early 2000s. You don't have to sell. So he went and got the number two player, which desperately needed a cash infusion now that Cursor just raised like another $900 million. And so Windsurf now has the cash to actually do interesting things. They're continuing to innovate and ship. I will say personally, 
I like the UI that Windsurf brings to the table. I like the experience of working with Windsurf. It feels very smooth. Everyone's choices vary. Most people are still choosing Cursor, and that's why it's the number one player in the space. If we think about, say, 2026 and what does the landscape look like, this enables OpenAI to steal a march on the other major model makers if they don't respond. So it puts the pressure on Anthropic and on Google and on others. Because now, if OpenAI wants to roll out an agent, they just have a channel to do that in that's proprietary. They aren't locked into the chat window is the only way to touch your desktop. And nobody else has that now. Google doesn't have a direct way to do that now. And neither does Anthropic, and neither does DeepSeek, and neither does X. None of the other players have that. And you better believe Sam Altman's going to use it. And so I would expect somebody with very deep pockets is going to try to buy Cursor in the next few months. I think the only player on the board who is good enough at models, aggressive enough, and ready to part with money at that level is probably Google. Amazon could afford it, but Amazon isn't playing in the space in the same way. And so my suspicion is if anyone's going to buy Cursor, is going to be Google. And Google probably needs to if they want to have Gemini 2.5 Pro and the agentic power of coding be something that Google is also known for long term. And they care. They just updated Gemini 2.5 Pro again today on May 6th. And they did it in order to jump from number three on the leaderboard to number one again. They really, really want their AI models to be known as the best and the brightest and the most cutting edge. Gemini 2.5 Pro was already a great model, and they relentlessly improved it again. So if you're investing that much in the AI model side, it would make sense that you would invest in the development environment too. So that's my little, that's my guess. That's where I think that's going to go. I don't think Anthropic has the money to buy. And I think that this is going to further cement their position as an excellent model maker but a number two player. And it's actually somewhat risky for them because Anthropic's position has been predicated on the sort of classic challenger brand approach of saying, we can't do everything good with our model. We don't have the com compute to serve everybody, but we can power engineers. And so the reason why you get fewer tokens in a lot of these situations in the chat window with Claude, Anthropic's model, is because most of their tokens are going to Cursor. Most of their tokens are going to a development environment and engineers who are using Cloud 3.5, Cloud 3.7 to code. That's the historic case. Will that persist? Even if they're not banned in Windsurf, will that persist long-term if they can't maintain control of a development environment? And if other companies with control of the development environment release agents? That is my question, and that is why I would stay up worrying if I were Dario Amade. There is not an immediate good counter for him here, and I think that he should be somewhat concerned. So there you go. That's my take on the windsurf acquisition, and uh, we will have to see how it all shakes out. New day, new news here with, uh, with AI every single day.